السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وابتدى بهداه. All praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. May the best of peace and blessings be on Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. The giants of Islam and جيل الذي رباه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. The generation raised by the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. Take it down first. الليلة مع ربيعة ابن كعب الإسلامي ربيعة ابن كعب الإسلامي one of the giants of Islam that we barely know even his name what do we know about ربيعة ابن كعب الإسلامي maybe one hadith very famous hadith that's that he narrated and it's very famous other than this we don't know much about him شاب فقير لا مال له ولا أهل ويعني بمفرده he was alone a young person and he doesn't have a job, he doesn't have a source of income, he doesn't have anything to do. Uh, he met with the Prophet he loved him so much. And he didn't have any place to go, he didn't have even a house uh, that he lived in. He doesn't have anything. A lot of the things that we are having, we take them for granted. You might be living in a house or even renting. The other week, we talk, we, I was listening to uh, somebody in Orlando, in Orlando, you said in, in Tampa by itself, let me try to remember the number, you, you were there, uh, I think 57,000 homeless people. I'm pretty much, you know, around that number. You're talking about one city, that's not the entire United States. Uh, so, a lot of the things that we're having, we take them for granted. We take them for granted. So this is somebody, he was Sahabi, living with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, doesn't have anywhere to go. And a masjid, uh, for those who most of us make Umrah or Hajj, uh, if you go to give a salam to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is uh, where he is buried, and Muna As-Salamu Alaihi Wasallam, this is the Hujrat Aisha. And behind it, if you come from the Rawda, you see some uh, green, uh, dark green uh, metal thing. These were all the rooms of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one behind the other Aisha. Hafsa and some other rooms they were there. Behind it, all the way behind it, there was a sofa, which is a place uh, for the homeless people or the poor people who do not have or did not have a place to go. They used to spend their time in the masjid. If they had work or something, they would do the work and come to the masjid to stay their time. Uh, uh, Rabia, he was one of them. Rabia the Kaab al he was from Aslam, the tribe of Aslam, and he was an Ahl sofa. One day he was thinking, well, he said, what could be the best investment that I do in my life? Or, I mean, many of us, you could have your, your life even doing good and everything. But we really need to make a decision that will make a change in our life. That will make a change, a positive change in our life. The decision he made was like this. He said, well, the best thing I could think of is to go and offer myself to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, here I am. And I'm ready to help you, serve you, whatever you want to do with me. And he did it. He said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, if you accept me as a servant for you, to serve you, that will be a great pleasure. And the Prophet ﷺ, the word every single person of us, he could be generous, even though it's as little as a word that you say, or a good word. And the Prophet ﷺ said, he accepted from him. He can utilize the Prophet all day. All day he is with the Prophet. He goes right, he goes left, he goes anywhere. He is with him. So when the Prophet needs something, he will be there to, to help him. This is a great honor. It looks like somebody who doesn't have anything to do, but it's a great honor to be with somebody that every now and then he is receiving communication from Allah. He is receiving guidance for the entire humanity. You will get all the pleasure to be with him. Even if you don't have a house, you don't have a place or nothing. So, that made all the change in his life. And he was serving Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all day. Then when it's time, night time, yeah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go to his house, to his room, and he would stay in front of the room. Maybe he would think to, let me go sleep, but, but then he would think again, maybe Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would need something at night, let me, let me stay here. And he would say, he would give us, he would work like an old you, MP3 uh, recorder or something, that would tell us what's happening in there. He would say, I would be like, almost like sleepy or something. And what wakes me up is the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam almost praying all night. Reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, I keep repeating it. Repeating Surah Al-Fatiha so many times. 
And then for so long, and then he makes ruku'ah, and then he stands up, Sami Allah, and he keeps repeating, repeating it. I mean, Salatul Layl is something special. It's not like Al Fard. You have to uh, be considerate for people who are praying with you. It was kind of medium or short. But if you are praying for yourself, and then Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is enjoying it, that's something that, that he enjoys it. So he was praying and making dua and repeating the ayat, and this person is listening to him. Maybe he would need something or so. And even sometimes he would go and join him. He would go and join the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How, how big, how great of an honor for somebody, for a human being, to be praying next to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night. I mean, try to imagine yourself or your son or somebody, try to imagine yourself there, praying with somebody who is direct contact with Allah. Then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam If you do anything good to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you say a good word to him, if you give him a gift, always the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi will give you something in return, in a way or another. وهذا من عادات البعض الأرياف والفلاحين وكذا وهي عادة محمودة if somebody give you a gift you feel some kind of moral obligation to also not necessarily give him the same thing but return it in something good كان نفسه صلى الله عليه وسلم يجازي على من أهداه he used always to, to do that so he saw somebody like this young boy uh, 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 offering big portion of his life for the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم and he couldn't find anything to, to give him back so he said sell me ya Rabi'ah ma shi do you have anything? I mean, how a, a generous offer from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Try to imagine Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking you. It's a beautiful thing to put yourself in place of those people. If Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells you, try to imagine yourself like him. Not having a house, not having a, a zawjah, not having, I mean, you're lacking a lot of stuff. And even if you're ha you having, you have everything like we have nowadays, we still have aspirations and hope, nothing wrong. But here is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was has access to everything. Gold come to him day and night from right and left. Money and a lot of stuff. So, if, I mean, he is in position to give you whatever you want. And, and it's, it's not you that ask him. It's a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi who is offering. He is saying, sell me my shit. Sell me my shit. Ask whatever you want. Obviously, Nabi Sallallahu does not exaggerate. He will, when he says something, he means it, literally. Sell me my shit. Ask whatever you want. He means it, alayhi salatu wassalam. And here is the teacher giving a very, very, very generous offer. And look at the student. He is the student of whom? Not the student of one of the shuyuk or scholars, with all respect. He is the student of Muhammad He was about to, that's a nafs, the normal thing. About to ask, he said, he said that he is saying, that it's a short hadith in sahih But in other uh, books, it's a little long. Uh, he is talking, he said, I thought about myself. And well, I need, what do I need? I need a wife, I need a, a, a house, I need just like anybody else who have zawja or ayal or kada and a job. Uh, but then he thought, why haqqa rabi'a? Ala ta'ala wa antuka. Don't you know who, who, who are you speaking with? You are speaking with somebody lahu makana and Allah lahu talaba lak minhu la ajaba. You are speaking to someone, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he has a status with Allah. If he asks Allah something, he will give it to him. قال فأثرت الباقية على الفانية أثرت الباقية على الأخيرة I prefer then I adjusted myself or my thought he was planning to ask uh, well give me money that amount of money or something but then he all of this is like going inside him he said well this is somebody who talks to Allah he has a direct communication with Allah and dua مستجاب من صلى الله if he makes a dua it's accepted so if he asks him something really special الأخيرة he said, what did he say? Famous hadith. I ask you to be with you in a gem. <laughs> I mean, that's very smart. Maybe even if he asks Allah to forgive all of his sins, which is really good, he might make sins later on, right? Okay, you are forgiven Allah, he will make dua for him, Allah will forgive him. Maybe if you ask him to give him whatever. But as Alukamura he is asking the destination to be not only in Jannah to be with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was the turn of the Nabi to be silent. Well, that's a, I mean, how can you guarantee something like this? That's a status for prophets. And then he, would you ask something else? I mean, let's negotiate a little bit. Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? Two words. That's it. That's what I'm asking for. I don't have anything other than this. And Nabi was thinking and he said, Well, 
فأعني على نفسك بكثرة السجود. If you have to reach to this position, then you have a homework to do. What is the homework to do? Help me against yourself to do a lot of sujood. Sujood is obviously prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the most symbolic form of humbling yourself, humiliating yourself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is يعني, one of the, the, the peak of ibadah. What's sujood muqtarib? Make sujood and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, other situations will happen like one day in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say, Ana tatazawaj wa rabi'a, ya ka'a, rabi'a, he said, don't you get married? I see you like alone. Don't you think to get married? I'm, 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 you know, I don't have a mom to give, I don't have a daughter, I don't have anything to offer. You know how things are going with me. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not argue much. Would not argue like we argue nowadays. He would ask the question or he would give something, even when he gives an order. If the person does it, does it, he doesn't do it well, no argument. Then another time, a different time, don't you consider getting married? He told him the same thing. Then he gave the same reply. And it's logic, I don't have anything. But then Rabi'ah, subhanAllah, he understood that there should be a point behind this. Why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking me this again and again? He said, why hakan? Why What is wrong with you? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is giving you this offer like twice. He knows best, he knows better. He, he has something to say. So, قَالَ وَاللَّهِ لَئِنْ سَأَلَنِي By Allah, if he asked me for a third time, I will tell him, yes, I'm ready and I'm thinking of it. And what do you have to offer me or what can I do? And he did. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi asked him. That gives us the point that if you are in charge, of a group, like of a family, or a leader of some group of people. You have to check on everybody. You have to know the needs of everybody. You have to touch. He knew that he, he could probably be thinking of marriage. And, and next time is offered, maybe he will tell him yes, but I don't have, so he will offer him some help. And that's what happened. And the third time when he offered him, when he asked him, he said, well, yes, Ya Rasulullah, I, I, I'm ready, but I mean, what do you have for me? Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah, he said, I don't have any money to pay for mother. And who is that family or that people that will give me their daughter like this? And they, they know that I'm a very humble, poor, poorer person. He said, go to such and such people, that family, and tell them that the Nabi, the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah is telling you to give me a daughter in marriage. I'm coming from Rasulullah, and he is recommending uh, uh, you, uh, me to, or you to marry me off to your daughter. And it happened. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also knew because he knew his community. He's not sending him to anybody. He knew that minute what they are shooting for is shooting for a good person. And he knows that. He's with him day and night, a good person. Another point, how could he, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, go and assign him like that? First, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, awla bi min and He plays like, like, or behaves like a father for believers. So he has wilaya on every single believer. This, this girl is his, it's like his daughter. He's just like his father. He can marry whoever he wants to. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But other than this, the emotional reaction or the, 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 the feeling from everybody, especially those certain families, towards the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would love what he prefers for them even more than they, they would like for themselves. They would give his preferences and his choices, uh, preference over their own choices. So if a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is it happened with another person that he sent Julaybi who was looking like so bad. I mean, they mean. But he sent them to somebody and they would accept him just because the Prophet sent him. So until we get to this level as a community or as people to love what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for us, what the Nabi Sallallahu chooses for us, even more than what we choose for ourselves, that's I mean that's a special status. They give him, they show him that they are really about Muhammad the Rasulullah Rasulullah. Well, yeah, and they welcome him so much as if he is a very good person, but actually, in reality, he is not like uh, very promising uh, in terms of finances and so on. He came back one day and he said, "They were you sent me to the best people, and they were so generous, and they accepted." Then he asked uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, summoned or called Rayd uh, al Hasib, one the leader of his family or his group, and he said his group, and he said, "Well, collect the mahr for him." The weight of a seat of gold, that's going to be the mahr for him, and he give it to him. It's not like very good, I mean, not abundant of money, but it's good. And he sent them to the people called Kathir al Tayyib. They said that's a lot and it's good. And, and, and they, they appreciate it so much as a mahr, as a dowry for the daughter. And he came to Anil Sassan and he said, Well, those are the best people, even though the, I know the dowry is little, but they, they appreciated it so much. Marriage happened. 
and Rabi'a yani, is helping and serving the Prophet sallallahu and he lived his life like that, so close, as close as possible to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he lived for so long after him until al Harra, which is uh, around the year 63 after Hijrah, which is around 50, uh, 53 years after the death of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, two, three situations, all we know from his life, from Rabi'a ibn Ka'b al-Islami, but that made him, that gives us a hint who is that person, who that person is. And at least we know that the Nabi sallallahu made dua for him, that he will be with him in al-Jannah. So let's look at their lives and consider some of those uh, yani good lessons from their life. One final situation uh, to mention quickly, things happen, we are not living with, an with angels, they were Sahaba and the best people, but something happened between him and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. After a while, after Futuhat, Katwarat, and Muslims got a lot of monies and, and stuff, and then Islam gave a piece of land to Abu Bakr, and next to it, a piece of land to Rabi'a. And uh, one day they disagreed about uh, Nakhla, uh, palm tree, and everybody thought, everybody was thinking, it's in my, in my piece of land. I mean, we are humans, I mean, and that's normal. And they were arguing. Until Abu Bakr Asma'u Shay'an Yakraw, he said some kind of a bad word or so to him. And then he, and he, he, he felt so bad on the spot because he said a, a bad word to his brother in Islam. And then he said, Please say the same word to me right now, just as bad as I told you the same word, so it will be like this for tit for tat, and, and, and we go. Rabi'ah, he said, no, I'm not going to say the same thing. Abu Bakr felt so bad that he was crying. He said a bad word and actually that, that counts against him. And the other person doesn't want to say the same thing. So somebody like Abu Bakr could slip, say something. It could happen. But on the spot, he corrected himself. And he said, well, please say the same to me now because I, need, I don't want this to stay in my record. But the other person refused. And then his people was coming to try to, you know, he said, he said, well, Wallahi, I ask you, Rasulullah, by Allah, I go and complain you to Rasulullah. That's Abu Bakr. Then he said, the, the group of Rabi'ah, they said, well, يعني, he, he's the one who said a bad word for you, and now he is going to complain to Rasulullah. He said, well, you stay away. You better stay away. This is the best friend of Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa And he's so close to him. And probably if he sees you coming to support me or something, he will get mad, and that will make Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mad, and that will make Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they had an argument and he said a bad word to him. But at the end of the day, brotherhood is still there. Who is still there. They came both of them to Rasulullah. One person is saying another a bad word to, to the other. And then Nabi وسلم, يعني, uh, uh, Abu Bakr was complaining, he didn't want, he said he didn't want to, to say the same thing for me. Uh, and, and, and then he said, You did good, yeah. Uh, Rabia, what you can say, Allah maghfir li Abi Bakr. What you can say is, oh Allah forgive Abu Bakr. This is the, what you can say. And he said, Allah maghfir li Abu, li Abi Bakr, oh Allah forgive Abu Bakr. And they just fix it. They argued, they had issues, I mean, even personal issues sometimes, but they would fix it on the spot because of Iman and Islam and Khuwa and Deen, that was the bond that, would, that get, gets them together. They would not like have such kind of fractions or so on. They would argue, but then. Islam would, would uh, akhlaq of Islam, manners of Islam would, would always prevail over uh, uh, such uh, relationship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuhiyyana ala khutam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us follow the footsteps, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the adab of Islam, the adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the adab of the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ajal us murafiqeen the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all, all of us, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest level of Jannah. اللهم آمين 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 جزاكم الله خير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين